Okay, so just a quick update on the solar tracker. Because the tracker came with a mount that looks like this, that you need to use a threaded rod uh, embedded in the concrete. It's not quite as strong as I'd like, so I decided to uh, strengthen it a little bit with some guy wires, which I purchased this week at the local hardware store, along with some hardware to uh, set it up with uh, turnbuckles and U-bolts and whatnot. I also uh, made a little plate that uh, uh, bolts to the side of the pole in order to create a mounting point for those cables. I used the bolts that uh, are meant to mount the uh, bottom bracket for the north-south actuator uh, right there. So those are plenty long enough, uh, plenty of thread to mount that bracket on the other side to give me that attachment point for my cables. So, uh, the cables are mounted to, are attached at the other ends to uh, various points, and I use some tires and rocks to weight down some of the attachment points. Uh, the west side is actually attached directly to the pallet, which is uh, loaded down with weight tires. Um, and the south uh, cable is actually connected directly to the house. That's actually the, the strongest one. Um, so the other thing I wanted to do, because it is windy here, and this is right up on the berm, is uh, get the wind sensor, because the panel will actually set itself flat in high winds uh, if it has the wind set sensor, and that will help to uh, present the, the smallest profile to the wind, um, kind of help protect it a bit. Unfortunately, the company, the manufacturer that sent me the wrong manual for this uh, tracker also gave me the wrong link. To purchase the wind sensor and this wind sensor that I purchased is not going to work. So I ordered another one off of eBay which will work but in the meantime as I say it is fairly windy here so I decided to come up with a temporary solution in the meantime. So what I did is I 3D printed a couple of parts, a couple of 3D parts that uh, uh, combined with a small DC motor uh, of course, you spin a, a DC motor and it will generate a small voltage. So this is it. And it will generate, you know, very small amount of voltage. But since the voltage threshold on the tracker controller is adjustable, I was able to set that to an appropriate level for this. So I'm going to give it a little flick. And the unit will react right away and drive itself flat. Now, the way it sets itself flat isn't, isn't great. It uh, has to drive itself all the way east and then halfway back to set the east-west flat. Now, the north-south is not a problem. It just drives itself all the way north and that's flat. Uh, but unfortunately, it has to go through the process of going all the way east first, which means that it's going to present the largest possible surface area to the wind. Uh, if the wind is coming from the predominant direction here, which is typically west or southwest. Uh, so that's unfortunate, but that's kind of the way it works. And then that's not even set with any kind of limit switches or anything that. Uh, you basically program it to drive it a certain number of seconds to the east, and then a certain number of seconds back west. Um, and you guess you kind of have to play with it until you, uh, you get that set right. So it's gone almost all the way. Looks like it's all the way east now, and it's just going to time out its, uh, its you know, seconds to drive east. It's uh, now going back west, and it's, I believe it's set to like 36 seconds to drive it west to get to flat. And you can hear that it is fairly windy. Um, it's not windy enough for me to want to set the panels flat at the moment, but it is, uh, it is fairly windy here. We're making some some power on the wind turbine. You see it's just about flat, shaking a little bit in the wind. And there she is. So that is flat and that should be pretty safe from the wind. And it does have a 300 second timeout and you can't see it really, but there is a 300 second countdown going on right now. And it will wait that 300 seconds before returning to normal, normal operation. 
Um, if the wind speed doesn't drop and it continues uh, to set off that uh, that trigger, it will reset that 300 seconds every time the wind goes above that threshold. So that's my temporary solution, and hopefully the new sensor will come in fairly soon, and I will swap it out, and then I will readjust my voltage setting, and uh, hopefully we won't have any issues with damage from the wind.